Shalom and welcome to TGC. In today's video, we will look at do Muslims really know what they believe in? Do they really understand their claims in Messiah Jesus? We know that Muslims claim they believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, do they really understand what the Messiah is to do? Throughout the entire Holy Bible, the one true book, it tells us the duties of the Messiah. Yet Muslims claim that Jesus is the Messiah. That they agree with the Christians that Jesus, yes, Jesus is the Messiah. Let's look at two clips. Yes. In terms of glorification, in terms of having respect of Jesus Christ and even his mother Mary, there's actually an entire chapter in the Quran called Surah Maryam, which is titled Mary. So, in terms of speaking or accepting him as the Messiah, even, yes, Islam is the only religion outside Christianity which accepts Jesus as a mighty messenger, a mighty prophet, and the Messiah. So, this is also one of the acid tests given by, by Jesus Christ himself. So, we have Mr. Hashim making the claim that Muslims, Islam, believes that Jesus is the Messiah. Us Christians, believers in Messiah Jesus, also understand and know what the Messiah's duties are. We got one more clip to look at. And in this video, we have the Muslim's favorite rabbi, their favorite sheikh, Imam. Now he's going to describe to us, you listen for yourselves. But really, what does the Jewish scripture say about the Messiah? Why doesn't Judaism accept this Christian claim? It's a fantastic claim and it lacks evidence. Tanakh tells us, our Hebrew Bible tells us, that there are certain events that will unfold in the Messianic age. When Mashiach comes, there'll be an ingathering of the exiles. That's Ezekiel chapter 37. The knowledge of God will cover the world as the water covers the sea. That's Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9 and verse 10. There'll be a resurrection of the dead. That's Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 the temple the third and final temple will be rebuilt if you look today so we have islam's favorite imam telling us what the duties of the messiah are now he's claiming that jesus the messiah did not fulfill these things and he is correct in stating these things that are supposed to happen when the Messiah comes. Unfortunately for our Southern Kingdom brothers and sisters, they don't realize these four things will be accomplished at his second coming. Now we have Mr. Hashem claiming that Muslims and Islam believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, if Islam and Muslims are truly, entirely truthful in what their claim is when they say they believe that Jesus is the Messiah, Muslims in Islam is telling us that they believe in all Israelites returning to the Holy Land, to their Holy Land, their promised land, Israel. 
That is what the ingathering of the exiles refers to. Now, this raises some questions. If Islam and Muslims truly believe Jesus is the Messiah, and these things is what he really performs when he returns, the real Jesus, not Isa, he's going to ingather, he's going to bring back all the exiles of Israel, the house of Jacob, back to their holy land, their promised land, Israel. Now we understand by current day actions, Muslims, Islam, they have a hard time accepting Jews being in the Holy Land. Now when we say Jews, that is the Southern Kingdom. That's two tribes. That's the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. Now we all know, till this day, as I'm speaking right now, the 17th of November, 2022, we still have the lost 10 tribes of Israel. Where are those lost 10 tribes? Where are they? Now when Jesus returns... He will fulfill this prophecy, which he has in quotation marks, parentheses, Ezekiel 37. Now, I make the claim, and I, you know, Hashem, Mr. Hashem can, can speak with, with me. I'm not, I'm making the claim that it's not just Ezekiel 37, but it's throughout the entire Bible. The one true book. So when Jesus returns at his second coming, because if you really believe he's the Messiah, and this is the number one thing that Islam's favorite imam, Tovia Singer, has put here as number one, the top of it is this, the ingathering of the exiles, the outcasts of Israel. So Islam is telling us they believe that Jesus is going to bring back all the tribes of Israel. That includes the 10 lost tribes we have today. And if we see Islam, Muslims having so much issues with just the southern kingdom, Judah and Benjamin being in their holy land, what will happen when the rest of the other 10 tribes return? What's going to happen then? Are you going to welcome them back? Because yes, we believe Jesus is the Messiah and we understand that the Messiah is supposed to gather up all of Israel, all the outcasts, of the house of Jacob back to their promised holy land, Israel. So that's the first issue. I'm going to now jump to the very bottom of the list, the rebuilding of the temple. So when Muslims claim they believe Jesus is the Messiah, one of the other things Messiah will do is he will rebuild the third, he will build the third temple. So if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah and one of his duties are to rebuild the temple, building the third temple, you shall, you, that means that you will have no problem with the Jews building a third temple. So that tells us that it's perfectly fine. But do they really believe what they tell us? 
that they believe Jesus is the Messiah. Thus, we know that the Messiah is going to rebuild a temple, the third temple. But what do they do? They build two domes on top of the site where the temple will be built. Now, I will make the claim they do that because they want to prevent the third temple being built. Now, if you believe Jesus is the Messiah and one of his duties as Messiah is to rebuild a temple, the third temple, why do you put domes on that site to prevent it? Is what you're telling us, telling the world, everyone you perform dawa to, and let us not forget, if any land does not allow Muslims to perform dawa, they can claim jihad on that land. But when they perform dawa, they claim they believe Jesus is the Messiah. Now, if you truly believe Jesus is the Messiah, you must believe these things that he must fulfill. Am I wrong? It's not adding up. Now, the second thing on this list, knowledge of God will fill the world. Now, the one true book, the Holy Bible, tells us when the Messiah comes and we Christians understand how and when this happens at his second coming, that the law will go forth from Zion. Do you understand the message in the Holy Bible, the one true book? That his law, whose law? Messiah's law. His law will go forth, go out to all the world from Zion. Now, this tells me and I believe this is the truth that if you believe Jesus is the Messiah, you must believe in the duties that the Messiah must fulfill. So that tells me that Islam, they believe in Zion. So why do we see Muslims get aggravated when the word Zion comes up? Do you know something that you're not telling us? Are you truly being 100% manning up what you really believe? The other thing is, what law did Jesus follow? Did he follow the Torah? Or did he follow the Sharia? We know it's not the same law. Anyone with the right mind, a logical mind, understands, comprehends, knows that Torah and the Sharia are not the same law. Yet the Bible tells us, the Holy Bible, the one true book, clearly instructs us that the Torah goes forth from Zion. So you must believe, if you truly believe that Jesus is the Messiah, you're telling everyone when you tell people, when you perform dawa, that you believe Jesus is the Messiah, that you love him more than Christians, that you're telling them that you believe 
that the Torah, not Sharia, but the Torah will go forth from Zion. So, that tells me, if you're truly, you know, honest and truthful, not bearing any false witness, when you perform dawah and you tell people that you believe Jesus is the Messiah, without a doubt, that you endorse Torah you and you endorse Zion and that you endorse it going forth, it, the Torah, going forth into all the world from Zion. So I ponder to myself, do Muslims really understand what they believe? Do Muslims truly understand what the Messiah is? What are the what the duties of Messiah means? Because as I ponder this, it leads me to believe whoever came up with making a counterfeit to the Bible, the one true book, either did not understand the duties of the Messiah and what he must accomplish, what he must perform in the world. Otherwise, he would not be the Messiah, correct? That they did not understand what they were making a counterfeit of. Yes, he's the Messiah, but they just knew at that time that he was the Messiah. But whoever decided to make a counterfeit to the Holy Bible did not understand the concept of Messiah and did not understand what he must have what he must fulfill. Now, this also makes me ponder, did they understand? And that's why they had to make a counterfeit Jesus and say, yes, we believe he's the Messiah. We believe Isa is the Messiah but he's going to do these other things. He's just going to lead everyone to Islam. And he's going to prove that the Jews and the, and the Christians have it all wrong. Then I ponder, okay. Why would, why would they do this? Why would they make a counterfeit book, a counterfeit law, and a counterfeit messiah? It makes no sense to me. For deceiving people? Or did they, when they made these three counterfeits, was it by accident because whoever came up with this counterfeit book did not fully understand nor had wisdom to know what the one true book, the Holy Bible, was explaining the message found in the one true book, the Holy Bible. And I mean the entire book from Genesis to Revelation. It has the same one message. So I ponder this. So I ask Muslims, I ask Mr. Hashem. Do you really believe Jesus is the Messiah? Because the Messiah has duties to fulfill. He fulfilled so much during his first coming. 
Because you also believe he comes again the second time. So whoever made these counterfeit book, counterfeit law and counterfeit Messiah. Did they really understand? And that's why they invented these counterfeits. Because as I claim, Islam is trying to steal the election, the inheritance, and the covenants from the house of Jacob. Now, when I say the house of Jacob, I'm referring to the two tribes that are in Israel right now in the 10 lost tribes. All 12 tribes of Israel are the house of Jacob. So which one is it? Do I flip a coin and whatever side it lands on, that's what I go with? Because if you truly believe he's going to bring them back, the house of Jacob, all 12 tribes, rule from Zion, and the law goes forth from, from Zion, and the temple will re be rebuilt on the site of those two domes. Why are those two domes there? It's either not understanding what the Messiah duties are to fulfill or that they did know and that's why they built two domes to try to prevent it. Trying to steal the, in the inheritance which is the Holy Land. Trying to change the election. So, so if you can prevent all 12 tribes from returning, you can steal the land. Stealing their inheritance. And getting everyone to believe that no, it's not Torah, it's Sharia. And that it's not Muhammad, but it's but it's not Jesus, but it's Mohammed you should believe in as the last prophet. You're trying to steal the covenant. So which one is it? Was it ignorance or theft? Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. Who's the enemy of Israel? Who's the enemy of the house of Jacob? Are they trying to prevent the true Messiah? Jesus. Not the counterfeit Messiah. Esau. Esau. From performing all his duties by trying to block everything from happening. But we know that will, ultimately, that will not happen. The one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, will fulfill these things. So the Messiah is supposed to gather all the exiles, that's all 12 tribes, back to the Holy Land. Are you going to allow that to happen? Will, you, will, you, will you, Islam and Muslims fight to the last breath to prevent that to happen to let them dwell safely in their promised land Israel, Jerusalem will you accept Jesus teaching his Torah out of Zion to all the world I would talk about the resurrection of the dead, but that might be too much for a lot of people. But that's no problem. I can handle that too. That's easy work as well. Do you think Muslims and Islam would have a problem with the Messiah rebuilding the temple on that site where the two domes are? What would happen Israel decided to say, you know what? This land was promised to us. This is our land. He has brought us back. We're building our third temple. Either you move your dome or 
remove it for you. What would happen? What would happen? Yet the Messiah's duty is to build the third temple where you say, look, you have no right to, to come in up here. You guys just hang out facing this wall, right? It's like putting people in detention. It's like a teacher telling a student, go stand in the corner and stare at the wall. So do you really believe Messiah Jesus is the Messiah? Do you really understand what you're saying when you say you believe Jesus is the Messiah? Do you truly believe, understand what the Messiah is supposed to fulfill? Because to me, it's not adding up. Something's not, something doesn't click here. The gears are grinding. The red lights are flashing. Alarm bells are alarming. Because what you claim Jesus is going to do when he returns is not what the Christians believe. It's not what the Jews believe that the Messiah is going to do. He will fulfill this when he returns. It's littered throughout the message, throughout the entire book, the Holy Bible, the one true book. And if you cannot see that, then you do not understand the message in the Holy Book, the one true book, the Holy Bible. Yet you're claiming you believe that he's the Messiah. So let us know that the Christian world know if you truly believe Jesus is the Messiah. Let the Jewish world know what you really believe. Do you really believe Jesus is the Messiah? Because the actions of the Muslims in the Islamic world that we see playing out in the world today does not align with claiming that you believe Jesus is the Messiah. Because the Messiah has duties to feel. So let please let us know. And I'll end this. With this as a quick message. To Mr. Hashem. My offer is still on the table, sir. Let's do this. Let's debate Isaiah 42. I'll debate for the Christian world. That it's Messiah Jesus. And as I have heard many Muslims claim. That it's Muhammad. That settle this once and for all. It will be easy work for me to prove. That Isaiah 42 is Messiah Jesus. It's easy work. I come for your belt. I'm the belt collector. All my brothers in Messiah Jesus. All my sisters in Messiah Jesus. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob comfort you and bless you. Shalom.